Today we're going to kick off the portfolio unit with Portfolio Basics. Let's get started by looking at these two websites. At a glance, which would you say is better? Hopefully you chose the one on the left. It's cleanly done, visually pleasing, and its purpose is immediately recognizable. The website on the right is harsh, it's messy, and there's so much going on that most people wouldn't take the time to determine what the purpose is. The website on the left is a photographer website or an online portfolio. And a quality portfolio is a total must have for any photographer. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. The secret to getting a creative job is a great portfolio. The statement is true no matter what kind of creative professional you are. It doesn't matter how much skill you have as a photographer or an illustrator or graphic designer. If you don't have a good portfolio, you don't really have any proof of your skill. You want to be able to show your potential employers or clients what you can do. And that's what the purpose of a portfolio is. So what is a portfolio? A portfolio is a collection of work, images, or documents centered on a main idea or to show a range of abilities used for presentation. So let's take some of these words or in phrases and break it down. A portfolio is a collection. Uh, this can be a physical collection uh, in a book or binder, or it can be a digital collection on a, your own personal website. A portfolio is a collection of, of images, lots of images, not just any images, but the images that show off your best work and a range of variety. Meaning you aren't just showing off any single style or subject, but a multitude. A portfolio is a collection of images to show a range of abilities. Abilities like composition, technical skills, even technology and use of software. You want to be able to show what you can do. A portfolio is a collection of images to show a range of abilities and is used for presentation. This is a real simplification and we're going to be looking at exactly what uses there are for a portfolio because portfolios are used in industries, not just creative industries, but business and education, all kinds of professionals can use a portfolio or a collection of their work that shows their range of abilities. So let's think about what are some ways you might use a, por a photography portfolio or any portfolio. Okay, so now that you've taken a moment to predict what portfolios might be used for, we're gonna dive into some of the most important uses of a portfolio. First is marketing and networking. This means your portfolio can help you sell your work and grow your business. Your portfolio, if it's online, can help your work be more accessible to people. It can help you grow a brand it can help you build brand identity so that more people hear about your work and know what you're about. You can build a following or a clientele base that is loyal to your brand and helps to grow your business. You can increase engagement so those people are thinking about you long after you've worked with them. You can utilize analytics to determine what type of people are viewing your portfolio and determine the demographic you should be targeting. You can collect positive reviews and testimonials so that people know what good things are being said about your work. You can even collaborate with other photographers or other creative professionals that might want to link or host your work. And you can sell your work or your services online directly from your portfolio or website. Next, we're going to talk about growth and reflection or the ways that your portfolio helps you to become better as a photographer. Your portfolio serves as documentation of all of the different things that you've done over your uh, learning as a, st a photography student and as a photography professional. Looking at that collection and working with it and building on it helps you create an awareness of maybe trends or maybe even uh, how things change over time. It helps you see how new skills and techniques have changed your work and impacted it and you might even want to revisit old work with the new skills in mind. 
one of the most important things that you can do with a portfolio is use it as a tool to gain feedback or in a critique. So other professionals can help you to see maybe areas that you need to improve or even maybe see trends that show you your strengths that you should build on. Last, we're going to talk about employment and resume. So how you can use your portfolio to get a job or build your business. Your portfolio is the evidence of the things in your resume. So not just a list of things on a piece of paper, but actual physical, undeniable skills that you have and that can be seen in your work. It allows you to display these skills, allows you to show off that you can edit and you can see composition and uh, there's a multitude of things that you can do. Your portfolio also allows people to see into your creative process and how your unique vision or thought process uh, approaches different kinds of problems. It also allows you to show off your achievements like any types of awards or recognition your work has received. It also shows off your potential. When you look at all of these things combined, it allows your potential client or potential employer to see not just what you've done, but what you're capable of doing. So those are some of the most important things about having a portfolio, but we're gonna look at the difference between the two types of portfolios now. Physical versus digital, what's the difference? In a physical portfolio, you're usually dealing with uh, printed photos in a photo book or some kind of photo binder. It, you're usually using it for interviews or presentation with potential employers or maybe clients. And you can even use it for showing clients different options and what things that they might want to pick from, from things that you've done for other previous clients. Because of the sentimental nature of printed photos, a physical portfolio often creates a more personal interaction with the person that you're showing it to. One of the nice things about a printed portfolio is that you decide the layout and the order in which the pages are going to be viewed. So you control the experience a lot more than somebody viewing your website. When we're talking about a digital portfolio, we're usually referring to a website, but you might also be dealing with something on a digital device. Generally, a digital portfolio is much more convenient. You're not having to deal with printing or extra costs, and you can send it to pretty much anyone, which makes it much more broad reaching. You don't have to be physically present for demonstrating or showing off your portfolio, and it can reach anyone in the world. You're also not having to deal with creating specifically different portfolios for different occasions when you can just create different sections of your website. One of the major pros is that it's editable, and as you progress and change as a photographer, you can update your website equally, as opposed to getting to the point where you need to print and create a new physical portfolio. Another nice thing is that your online portfolio is constantly working. So it's there online for anybody to stumble across and is constantly viewable to people all over the world. Even though physical and digital portfolios are very similar, it's not an either or option. A good photographer should have both. So when you're creating your portfolio, whether online or physical, uh, what should go inside? First off, it should be a lot of photos. And that, those photos should vary. They shouldn't just be one type of photo. And even when you are a specialized photographer, you want to be able to show that you have a range of ability and that you don't just do one thing. You also want to show off all of your skills. Anything that you can do, you need to show evidence of it because you're, that might be what your employer or client is looking for. You also want to show insight into your process. Uh, people want to know how you think, how you approach things. They don't want to just know what you've done before. They want to know what how you'll do things in the future. And that leads into evidence of your continual growth. They want to see that you're constantly trying new things. Even if it's not what you're best at, they want to see that you do change and you do grow so that you haven't reached your potential yet. All of these things are very important to a portfolio and we are going to work on making sure that they are all in our portfolio throughout this year. So let's take a moment to reflect on what we just covered. Okay, now that we've covered everything, if you feel like you need, still need a little more practice, you can use this link to review a little bit more. Now that we've covered the basics on a photography portfolio, let's look at some quality photography websites. I mean, have you view each one of these three websites? And while you're doing that, I want you to ask yourself, what content does this photographer specialize in? 
is that really obvious when you're uh, looking through it and then what is that photographer good at uh, based on what they've presented you what do you think that, that they specialize in is it architecture photography is it macro is it family is it wedding i want you to sp tell me what they specialize in just based on what you see on their websites